this almost godlike figure mm. who somehow managed to write all these plays out of nothing. But mm. here explained how he wrote the, the plays. Yeah. Well, what you were saying yeah. about Holland Shed and the theatre well, company you put two, two together and made three. I mean, just, I mean, just have, a, have a look here. And I'll, 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 I'll you know, you know, this, 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 clearly we can't do these lights will come on but I'll just put this, this screen up but the little things I mean he was only found this, this John the Baptist he was found three years ago um, and you can see how bright and clear that is um, and I'm sure that I mean if William never knew that painting certainly his father would have done and another interesting thing, and um, one of the reasons I brought you here, is these scratches on here. The Guild of the Holy Cross used to have a feast here every year around June the 29th. And these scratches are someone keeping a tally of what they've had at the feast. And they have lists of like 147 geese, 300 chickens and bits and bobs like that. So it's a fabulous survivor. And so the, the, the latest these can be is 1547, because that's when the Guild were disbanded as part of the Reformation. Um, to the left of the, the altar, you can see a, a window. Now, the first purpose-built schoolroom was next door. That was built in around 1428, 29. That, that was filled in. The little house next door was built. Uh, the schoolroom was downstairs and the mas master lived upstairs. They moved upstairs in the 1560s, and I think it was just because there were too many children for next door. And the way they got into the schoolroom upstairs, and you'll see a filled-in door in the corner of the schoolroom, but they came through the old schoolroom, up through the old master's chamber, and then into the schoolroom. But um, I just wanted to show you that. So how was that discovered? What, what, what? Well, what happened was the, the main uh, pictures were found in the in middle of the 19th century when the school took over the whole building for the first time. Right. So just before we opened three years ago, the, they got conservators in to see what they could do. And they came in. And the conservator said he was just wiping down with water and a rag. But being a conservator, there's bound to be a cotton bud in there somewhere. Isn't there? <laughs> um, and he, he started to expose it. And no one had any idea. And of course, as soon as he found it... So it was just muck? Was yeah, just, it was distemper. Just, yeah. You know, because all they did was paint over it with distemper. Mm. The Gill Chapel next door, which is fabulous, that was all sort of painted over some time later, yeah. because when, it was a dodgy time. I mean, because Mary, I mean Edward, died young. King Edward VI died. I think it was about twelve or thirteen when he died. Mary took over, who of course was a Catholic. Mm. So, if she'd have lived and had children. We would probably still been a Catholic country, but she died. Elizabeth took over, who was a who was a Protestant. So that's why we finished up Protestant. So, I mean, they were hedging the bets when they did it with distemper because who knows that? Yeah, never really thought of. Mm. You know, just Cover it up, but just not. Yeah, not too well, because yeah, just yeah. in case. I mean, they had mm. travelling players. You know, travelling painters come round and do it, so you have to pay them. This. Um, There's a sideline for you. Yeah. Yeah. This um, crest is the wrong way round. It's back to front. Hmm. Now, there's several theories about why it is back to front. We had a lady come round who, whose uncle was an expert in Catholic paintings. And she said that what used to happen is that when they came round, they were paid 50% of the money up front. And if... Um, they weren't treated very well, they would make mistakes on the paintings. Mm -hmm. Now, in Ireland, evidently, there's three crests done wrong on one of the paintings. Now then, another theory, again by someone who's actually an expert on Guildhall, said that they used cloth stencils and somebody had put it on the wrong way round. Mm -hmm. However, if you think about it, if you put a cloth stencil the wrong way round, it wouldn't come out like that. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the Guild were dodgy payers, then? It seems like, or maybe not, or maybe someone just made a mistake and nobody noticed. Or well, the it would, dodgy it, players. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's only one person who knows the answer, and unfortunately, yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. he's no, no longer with us. But um, <laughs> so, if I just have, I'll just show you the, the counting house. This is where the Guild of the Holy Cross would carry out, would carry, would. Um, 
do all their counting yeah. the money. And that chest is the actual chest the guild would have used to keep their um, documents in. They've got a lot of property, a lot of money. It would all be kept in that chest. Um, made of elm, first mentioned around 1470, thought to be a lot older. Right? But when the guild were disbanded and the town, the council took over the, you know, this building, this stopped being the counting house of the guild and became the council chamber. But the council took over that chest. And John Shakespeare, William's father, was involved with the council. He would have had one of the keys to that chest. So you've got that direct link back to right. the Shakespeare family. And with young William being number one son, uh, first surviving child. I mean, I'm sure he'd have accompanied his father here, so it's likely that young William would have known that chest as well. Right. And three chest, three keys at the front, so that no one person mm -hmm. at the end. There's one in Warwick, evidently. It's got nine locks on the front. Very <laughs> trusted in Warwick. Are these curtains move? Out yeah, yeah, up? we can move them. What they are, because um, there's some dodgy pigments on poor old John the Baptist, so we have to keep, keep it, it dark. quite dark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do, I'll take you upstairs now. Um, this part of the building, this bit is Victorian. Um, oh, right. This was put in later. Um, see the back of the Guild Chapel there, but fabulous little courtyard here. And the headmaster now lives in that building there, John mm. William. But young William was the, the only famous person from Stratford. In, um, John de Stratford and his brother went to school in Stratford. And John de Stratford became Chancellor of England <laughs> and later Archbishop of Canterbury. And his two brothers, or one of the brothers and cousin, became bishops as well. So, which is handy when, you, when your brother is Archbishop of Canterbury, you sort of get those openings. Don't yeah, it's like the Guild is the, is the start of the, well, not the start, it's the establishment basically, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah. the, it's the power, the, the boys' club. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The landowners and yeah. the, the money man. And of course, I mean, with, with um, the idea why Edward VI was so keen on education and Henry VIII, who were trying to create a middle class, yeah. of course. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, coming to here, this is where the master moved. Uh, and, but I've got my colleague up here. This is, would have been the master's chair. And up on this wall, there's some interesting. Roses, medieval roses. Now then, um, initially they were thought these were early Tudor roses, but um, later uh, information and, and what have you is that these are probably the roses of the Virgin Mary. Um, we have no record of when they were actually painted, but it's likely that these are not Tudor roses. They look like Tudor roses. No, mm -hmm. well, the, the, the use of thought think they were early with the white rose on the inside there and then that one with the white rose on the outside. But we had a gentleman mm -hmm. come and talk to us about it and he was of the opinion that the Tudors didn't adopt this rose until quite late on mm -hmm. um, in the reign of Elizabeth I. And um, he believes she adopted it to draw the comparison with herself, the Virgin Queen, and the Virgin Mary, Mary. Mm -hmm. to keep, because she knew that people still retained the old faith. Better branding. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, and they invented their name as well. Yeah. yeah. From Tudor from the Welsh Theodore, which comes from the ancient Greek Theodorus, meaning gift from God. Right. So, hey guys, we're here to be your kings and queens, but don't argue because you know who sent us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But they look so fresh, don't they? Yeah, yeah. it was. They, they, again, I mean, there was a roof in here. I mean, we have some more medieval paintings on there, which probably survived because they were behind a bookcase. These are uh, mm. same sets, and down they believe is the Rabbit Staff of Warwickshire, which is part of the Admiral of Warwickshire. Oh, yeah. uh, down the bottom, you can see what I think it looked like. But mm. I mean, the whole room you can see there's got some red here. The whole room would have sang with colour, one would imagine. And, yeah. um, and of course, the Victorians had this black and white fetish, didn't they? So, <laughs> uh, the building outside is very interesting. They initially thought that was the first schoolroom, but uh, when they dated the timbers, it was much later, so they believe it was built as a, um, a chapel or a refectory for the arms houses uh, but the from here the master moved into there Alexander Aspinall moved there and that became the master's house 
And as I say, now the headmaster lives in the Georgian building at the end. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave you with a capable hand of William yeah. Shakespeare's teacher. <laughs> Right. Who looks good for his age, but well, not that good, I've noticed. Um, <laughs> you haven't really got the boys under control, have you? Yeah. They are quite well, violent with the old graffiti. Yeah. Um, one of yeah. these chaps came in a couple of weeks ago, RCK. He said he carved his initials three times. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one there. But mm -hmm. this guy, Spender, was quite determined he wasn't going to be forgotten. <laughs> Blimey, uh, yeah. I don't know how he expected to get away with that. He was going to say, teacher, come on. Notice that yeah, you know, somebody's he, not really concentrating on their Latin. He also carved his name in the headmaster's office. Yeah. So can you imagine when the headmaster confronted him and says, Spender, did no, you do not this? Not me. No, no sir. No, it's not my handwriting. Yeah. But, uh, he was a war poet, Second World War, and like all good war poets, he managed to get himself killed. Yeah. But the, um, his cable in chest is decorated on three sides, not on the back here. Mm. So it was made to go up against the wall. Oh. Early 17th oh. century, it dates from. Now then, you can imagine there's not many buildings in Stratford that have accommodated a no. table like this, That's purely a as a decorative thing. Yeah. One, one of those buildings, of course, was New Place. Because oh. at the front, everybody had a gallery for the ladies used to exercise. So there is a chance that this was William Shakespeare's table. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, so a long gallery would have fit in the long yeah. gallery, wouldn't it? So, I mean, we, we've got no proof of that, but we've got no proof that it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what we're hanging on to. Yeah. 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 We, we, I mean, we, we are in the land of imagination mm. and, and yeah. mm. whatever, so why can't it be, you know? Yeah. Can you see what's on these shields? Are they faces? They look like heads, don't they? Yeah, I think it's saints heads. Well, that's yeah, like halos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this one, forward, this one is definitely David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie. And this is Aladdin's saints. Yeah, it is. This is Gwendolyn from Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Looks yeah. like a mushroom. Yeah, yeah. But you can see the, the ragged stuff of uh -huh. Warwickshire here. It's repeated down here as decoration, various bits of foliage. This, I mean, this was done when the plaster was wet. So if it was the first plaster, around about 1420. And this is more, or is this more recent? Oh, that's more recent, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. Some of these floorboards came from Hampton Court. So Henry VIII may have walked in this room vicariously, <laughs> as he was. But if you want to come through to the schoolroom, we'll have a little chat about education, shall we? As this is the schoolroom. And my colleague, um, Pete, will look after you in the Georgian classroom. All right. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Now, have any of you been in the sixth form? Uh, yes. Where, why is it called the sixth form and not the sixth year? Oh. Well, what you're sitting on is a form. It's the first form for the youngest boys, sixth form plus for the oldest boys. So it's all mixed ages in here, not enough boys in the town to split into years. So the oldest boys are expected to help teach the younger boys. So it's a good incentive to learn when you're young, because you can look pretty stupid if you haven't, when you get to it older. Uh, this is where the boys keep their books, their food, their candles, and their beer. And it's beer because the water is far too dangerous to drink. So the beer making process kills off the bugs. But it's not very strong beer. It's what we call small ale or small beer. Uh, and you can drink quite a lot of that without being drunk. So I won't be teaching a classroom full of sozzled schoolboys. We reckon you can drink eight pints of that without being drunk. If you've had more than that, you've had one over the eight. Anyway, that's a useless piece of information for you. I'm Thomas Jenkins, I'm a headmaster here. I should be teaching you Latin, grammar, history, religion, philosophy, everything you need really to be a, a fully rounded young gentleman when you leave this school. Uh, this is called Big School. You start in here at the age of seven. You'll be here till you're 15, it's a good long time. Before you come to Big School, you may well have been to Petty School from the French Petit in the chapel next door from the age of five to seven, where you'll be learning social skills, um, your place in society, respect for your teachers, for your parents, for God, your place at the dinner table, 
how to eat properly, how to use your utensils and your napkin, and how to chew your food without opening your mouth. All very useful social skills. And you arrive here at the age of seven. Now it's a long day, you start in here at six o'clock in the morning, and you're here till five in the afternoon. Are you sitting comfortably? It's a long time. Two hour lunch break. In the winter you can have a bit of a lie in, all right? Uh, start at seven in the morning and you finish at four when it's dark. Candles are expensive so you might as well push off but it's still a long day. It's a long week. You're in here every day except Sunday. You get a half day on Thursday, market day, uh, but it's, it's a long week. And it's a long year, 44 weeks of the year, so we take education very seriously here. You get a good, long, solid education. So typical week, you arrive here Monday morning, and the first thing I'm going to do is test you on the sermon you listened to in church the previous day. And you will have been to church, because it is the law. It is compulsory to go to church. If you don't go to church, you get fined. And worse than that, we suspect that you're a secret Catholic, which is not a good thing to be at the moment, all right? So if you're a secret Catholic, you just knuckle down, listen to the sermon, and I'll test you. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which is your half day of core curriculum subjects. Friday is the day that all the boys look forward to, because Friday is Punishment Day. So if you've been rude, recalcitrant, lazy, or late on a Monday, your name goes in a book. And you've got a nice long time to think upon the errors of your ways before I give you a good thrashing on Friday or pay one of the other boys to do it if I'm feeling too lazy. Uh, you could, of course, redeem yourself in the interim, possibly. Saturday, we'll be doing a bit of testing, all verbal testing, study of the catechism, a bit of religion, and we'll be doing some arithmetic in the afternoon, and then you'll start again going to church on Sunday. Uh, now, we'll be majoring on Latin. We encourage you to speak Latin both inside the classroom and outside in the playground. And you'll be studying the great works of antiquity in Latin. So you'll know the plays of Plautus. You'll know the stories of Ovid, people, things like um, Pyramus and Thisbe that could be recycled in plays later. You'll be studying Terence and Seneca. You'll know all about the assassination of Julius Caesar. You'll know the Roman histories. You've got a good background in that. Uh, and then by the age of 11, you'll be writing pretty well in Latin. Uh, when you get to 15, if you're really intelligent, obviously like me, you can go on to university. Oxford is very good. I recommend Oxford. But only if your parents are well off enough to pay for you. Education is free for the boys in this classroom. If you want to go further, you need some backing. Now, you might expect a middle class trader in this town to be able to afford to send his boy on to university. Perfectly reasonable. But if your name is John Shakespeare, uh, an alderman of this town and a former bailiff or mayor, and you've been involved in some very dodgy illegal sheepskin sales in London without paying tax and without a license, you might find that you've been caught out and fined very heavily. You might, be, might find you've been caught for usury as well, illegal lending of money, and fined a hundred pounds. A hundred pounds. Just to put that in context, my salary is, is 20 pounds a year. So five years. Mm. Actually, it was reduced on appeal to a pound, but that would still hurt. But uh, John Shakespeare, I mean, the man is a villain. He's a rogue. I mean, he's been up in front of the court in this building charged with assault, and worse, leaving a dung heap outside his own front door in the middle of Stratford. You imagine the smell. And, and, the man is a recusant. Yeah. I thought that would shock you. Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> a recusant is someone who refuses to go to church probably because he's a secret Catholic now his excuse is that he's in so much debt he doesn't want to be served with a court writ which he could be if he stepped outside his own front door he can't be served with a writ in his own house but he could be on the way to church what do you think about that as an excuse? do you buy I'm that? Yeah. Yeah. what about the rest of the week? does he never step out of his house the rest of the week? I think the man's a Catholic. You, if you bump into him downstairs, you have nothing to do with him. He's a ne'er-do-well. Now, so far, you'll notice I've only been talking about educating boys. What about girls? Should we be educating girls? Probably not. Well, we all went wrong. Is that, are they worth educating? That, by the way, is a rhetorical question. <laughs> and you'll also be studying rhetoric here, because we like a good punch-up in our debates. Well, girls, bad luck. Usual thing. Learning on the job at home, cooking, cleaning, sewing, looking after men who clearly...
can't look after themselves. The lucky ones will go to what we call a dame school, so-called because it's run by a woman. Now, they're not very well off, dame schools. They don't have much in the way of resources, books or anything. They have these things called horn books. Now, a horn book is not a book at all. It's just a chunk of wood. It's a board. It's a bit, a bit bigger than that. And it has a parchment pinned to it with the letters of the alphabet, various prayers written on it. It's called a horn book because it's covered with a thin layer of transparent cow's horns to protect it. So it lasts for years. It has a handle, gets passed around, and the children are taught to copy out the letters and copy out the prayers, which they would know by heart anyway. That's not the same as being able to read and write. It's just mimicry. They're just copying. So they're copying out the letters of the alphabet, and as you know, there are 24 letters in the alphabet, aren't there? No. <laughs> which is why. Why do we only have 24? taken out because they signify the devil? Oh, that's an interesting one. No, no, no. We have two pairs of letters which are completely interchangeable. You can, you can use either of them to spell a word. Uh, the, uh, the V or the W or the... Uh, one of those is right. F or the... Um, F and uh, No, yeah, was it F and sir? Or some... There was... I know in, in old writing they often replace letters that we don't use today or... It's you were close with your first one, V and W. <coughs> yeah, w, w, uh, U, right. U, yeah. V and U, completely interchangeable. Go down the churchyard, look at the monuments, see whether the stonemason has decided whether it was easier to chisel a U or a V. Mm. No brainer. What's the other pair? You've been in a chapel, looked at the pulpit, and seen IHS on the pulpit. First letter is. Oh, the Y, the Y and the I. No, I and J. I and J. Okay. Oh. Jesus. I oh. and J. Completely oh. interchangeable. Mm. We have another sort of a letter. It's a word, really. It's an abbreviation. Um, you, you see it around an old place like Stratford. You might see a sign saying, Ye Old Tavern, Ye Old Forge. It looks like ye, sometimes with the E above the Y. It's actually a representation of the word the, mm. never ye. Uh, so it's not pronounced ye. It's just the the. The, yes. Uh, I don't know whether it was uh, a way of distinguishing between the and the. It might have been, possibly, because we, we have that. So why replace TH? Ye, yes, replace TH. Yeah. The, T-H-E. In any other words? No, it's just that. Just that? It's that, yeah. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, that's a useless piece of information for you. Now, Latin. Um, why do we major on Latin? Why is Latin still important? Sorry, can I just yeah. stop you while we're, we, before we get into uh, another... Are you short of time? I'm oh, sorry. Well, we're... Yeah, we're, we're, yeah there's, an, there's an element of what we're doing. Uh, yeah. We need to look around here, but yeah. also we need to think of it from a different perspective, don't we? Fascinating as All right. this yeah, yeah. is. It's, it's brilliant, but... I don't know how much of this we we're, we're going to use. Well, in I terms suspect. Of, well, I mean, I of the history of it, mm. uh, it, but in terms of the the the, the room, space, obviously, the, the space, space is brilliant. Yeah. But what are we thinking? So originally, we're here for a meeting with Sarah, right? Marketing, who's been called away. Yes, yeah. Uh, because it's part of a project that 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 we're sort of you know, putting together, right? Yeah, yeah. Putting together. So. So we need to look at the space, we right. need to look at how you use the space. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting how you're using yes. the space. Yes. Yeah. And whether that might influence what we do. So rather than have the full tour, we're interested in how you're interpreting it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, so the question is, well, how much more do you usually give uh, a visit to? Well, that, uh, what I'm basically doing is making out a case that Shakespeare wrote his own plays. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, because uh, you've got the Latin influences, so he could invent words. He could, uh, he'd got the Roman histories, he got the Roman stories, so you've got all that reflected mm, in the yeah. plays. He studied the Tudor histories, so he knew all that. Uh, he was exposed to theatre because any touring theatre company had to perform in this space in this to get a licence, so it was censored by the council. Ah, now, so the, yeah. 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 Right, now you're hitting something. So it, talk about that. Well, uh, normally, well, you can hear what the acoustic's like in here. Uh, what, what used to happen was, if there was, typically in London, there'd be a public health scare, so um, smallpox or plague or whatever, the first thing the authorities would do, close down the theatres and stop people assembling and spreading the disease, which is perfectly sensible. Mm. But the actors are out of work, so they throw all their costumes and props in a wagon and they bring the production out to the Midlands and tour around here to, to keep going. So typically, you might have 40 boys in this classroom learning, uh, 
There's no artificial light, so mid-afternoon the doors crash open and in comes the touring theatre company banging drums, blowing trumpets and declaiming speeches. It, well, this is the boy's first interaction with a professional theatre. Mm -hmm. Big influence. If you're the son of an alderman like William, you are entitled to sit in that room and watch every production free of charge. So I think we can be pretty sure he so did that. the performance is in, it's in that room down there, yes. Okay, so this is still while lessons are going on here? Yes. Is that, yes. Okay. So it's during the day when the during boys the are day, here, when the boys theatre here. company could come in. Yeah, they're not going to get any work done. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and they would perform to who? who to the aldermen and the councillors and, and officials of the council. They, they'd be checking for um, seditious references, uh, Catholic ah, okay. references, mm. whatever you do, don't mention the succession to the throne. So it's like a pilot run for them to approve it before it went out. They approve it, no. send, they cut it, mm. and then it goes out. And, and it would go out around spaces indoor or outdoor? Taverns, yeah. uh, open okay. courtyards. So it wouldn't necessarily be a full-on production that we imagine would go on at the Globe. It would be more a, a small yeah. A taste, a taste taster. Yeah, pretty so, much yeah, like touring yeah. theatre companies yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah. You just adapt to space. Yeah. Right. So what you're looking at is a, it, it's basically you're coming in the with your bus best slices. Bits, really. Yeah. The Bard's best bits. Yeah. 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 As opposed to and, the Bard's boring. And on top of that, the boys actually have acting experience as well, because they put on productions in this room from memory in the original language, so it could be Greek or Latin. Mm. There's a big emphasis on learning by memory. Everything's done by rote. We don't use books much, because they make you lazy. And this is how I leave people. Uh, yeah. so, so we, well, it was before it was before the mass printing press. By by the the printing press made people free because they could find out for themselves. Mm -hmm. But beforehand, mm -hmm. they were told what to learn yeah. and told to learn it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the the actual thinking process didn't go on mm -hmm. because when you read a book, you can think about it and you think about what it says. Yes. But if you're told what to think and told what to believe, and you're told whether you're a good person or a bad person, then you, you lose the ability to think, or, or you're never, you never practice the ability to think, you just fit into the system. So that's why the printing press was so revolutionary. When it started it being it. printed in English, then people could start thinking for themselves. Exactly. And that's when we start getting these mass persecutions in Mary and Elizabeth's reign, because mm. people were free thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So the plays but that, that. Come mm. here would have been perform would have been what would have been Greek would have been the, the or what, for the public the there would be vernacular stories. but right. but the place performed in this room by the boys would have been an academic yes. exercise as much mm. as anything. So the play the, the, the plays in here that came in to get their license if you like and yes. get approved what what plays would we be looking at then? Well, there was uh, an earlier version of King Lear and there were histories and there were comedies. Not many of them have survived. So I suppose, would, uh, so by the time Shakespeare was producing plays, was would this still, still as it was, or, or the Guild moved on and, and... It was, the school was refounded under uh, King Edward VI, mm. so it's still today a King Edward VI grammar school. Sure. So, because yeah. originally it was a Catholic institution under the Guild, and they were, they were powerful, they had money, yeah. they had influence, they even had access to arms. So it was important. But, but that's okay, because it's, it's Edward VI. Yeah, then. but Edward VI refounded it as a Protestant church. Yeah, but, but we're thinking of, say, when Shakespeare was at its height, mm -hmm. um, you know, the turn of the century, this will still be doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. 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 It would. Yeah. Well, fi um, 1593, were, that was a plague year, and that was when they did Taming of the Shrew, um, because that was one of the years that they couldn't perform in London. And that was the first year of 1593. So it's quite, it's quite potentially quite possible that having gone, penned his first well, you would have thought he'd come, play, back. come back You'd here so. because he might have had it performed. Yeah. A little bard's best bits of the Taming of the Shrew. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. I know that because that's when we started. That's when we started. 1993 it was the first production of Taming of the Shrew, and it was the 400th anniversary because of the year, that year, they didn't go into London, and that was Pembroke's men who performed that and they they traveled it around yeah but the, so but you don't have the research to say where they went uh we do have some of the some um, of the but remember heritage is about well we can't prove you did yes you? yeah mm. yeah yeah he def there was definitely a tour by pembroke's men in 1593 and of taming of the shrew of taming yeah. of the shrew right yeah 
the Shakespeare disappeared from from here for seven years mm. and reappeared in London as an established actor mm. and beginning to write plays. Uh, it looks like Titus Andronicus, which might have been his first, was a col collaboration. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, if computer good. analysis of the text suggests that some others are collaborations as well, you can identify individual hands yeah. uh, in different scenes. If you've got a Tudor story, Tudor history, and don't forget this was being used by government as propaganda, so you've got your approval to mm. get the government message across. You could divvy the plot up and say Marlowe would write one scene, Shakespeare would write another. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, at the time that Shakespeare disappeared from here, Michael Woods noticed that the Queen's men were touring in the area. Mm. And one of their actors, they're always a pugnacious lot, uh, got involved in a fight, got killed. So they were an actor down. So it's possible, possible that, that uh, because he got acting experience here, he was mm. already writing poetry, he might have joined them at that point to learn the craft yeah. and tour. So that's that's weird because from our point of view and from the from the, the visual perspective, the idea of reenacting that for viewers makes it really pertinent mm. that it's done here and it's also a good reason to do a shortened or small version of the play. A test which is which is entirely accurate, mm. if you like, in terms of its idea at least. Um, and shows off the space in the way that it was used. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would there be almost like a ceremony? You know, you come in, like say there's noise, there's musicians that would come through and then there'd be an audience already waiting for you. And yes, so a small audience of the, the councillors and the, the aldermen and officials. So there are, you've got yeah. kids in here. Kids so in here. so yeah. in terms of thinking about a modern audience, mm. um, that could be interesting. Mm. Mm. And that's where the teacher sits, presumably. Yes, uh, yeah. the woodcuts is quite interesting. What do you think of this layout? Well, I was, that was, that's well, what was, was interesting. Yeah. But I guess because you're not looking at a blackboard or, or whiteboard, mm -hmm. you know, there is no reason to necessarily look straight ahead with the teacher and the yeah. board. But you've got light. You've got light, but you've also got a full view mm. along all the well, rows of all the kids. I can walk up and down here, and no boy is very far away from me, so I can lean in, <laughs> <laughs> smack you around the head if you're messing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, I had a woman from Brittany came in here. She, was, she said, this is like my school. Right. And she said, we're all mixed ages, and there was never any disciplinary problem because the old ones kept the younger ones under mm. control, and they had that extra responsibility but mm. turned at 90 degrees as well. Mm. well oh, sorry, I don't know about the layout, but just you were saying the, the, the years, were the, were mm. the, it's possibly, I don't know, I didn't check that. But you can see, on this, you, can tell, uh, you can tell me which day of the week that one was done. Clearly Friday. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's music on the wall here, yeah. which is uh, interesting. But you can see the, it looks like the boys are, you know, disciplining each other, learning. Yeah. together you even got a dog in the classroom yeah. and then testing the master would have tested verbally all the tests even university entrance exams would have been verbal tests so they would have been able to read but they don't necessarily pass that on directly to the kids and they would test them from the book yes yeah. the, they had specialist teachers uh, to teach the, the scribes yeah. to teach them how to write oh and i see that is this layout isn't yeah. it yes yes yeah, so, mm. so actually so you come out and then you take the master Testing. Yeah. Individual. Yeah. And then you get an apple if you've done well in <laughs> when they're in. So they weren't all for the teacher that the kids were. <laughs> 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 right. That's interesting though, in terms of gives us a, a, a contact. Yeah. So can we this is great. Are we being handed off? Yeah. Can yes, can yeah. 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 But this when you say this, the room where the aldermen were, is that yes. through that door there? No, 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 no. This, this, this is a classroom. Room. Right. This is a classroom. The aldermen meet downstairs. The but where would government the performance have been? Downstairs. Oh, downstairs? Oh. Yes. Not right. in here? No, 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 no. no. Ah. The government of Stratford was downstairs here in 1940. Right, right. Yes, from, from 1553 when we got a town council. Borough Council produced, the town council met downstairs until 1840. Right. This was the schoolroom. This was the schoolroom. At least the 1560s, possibly earlier. Right. What and about this is this around late uh, sort of 1590s? 
Oh. It's before 1590s. 1560s we're definitely sure about. What, what about 1590s? What, what would it have been then, do you know? Pretty much as it is now. As it is now, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. But if you look at this now, this is the room that is still used today to teach boys. Mm. So boys have been taught here for nearly 500 years. Mm. The school uses this room from 9 o'clock in the morning till 10.30. Mm -hmm. At 10.30 they pack up, go back into the main building so that we can come in and get it ready for the public to visit. Mm. Right. But these desks are only 300 years old. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. pretty, so they're pretty more brand new. Yeah, yeah. Jacobean. And that gives the, the kids at the school some sense of history. Yeah. Continuity, really. I mean, the only thing that isn't taught up here is anything that needs technology. Mm. You know, so all the languages, history, geography. Right. So again, just thinking about if it's for this sort of project. So that's every weekday, the school area in here? Uh, pretty well every weekday. Yeah, not yeah. weekends. Uh, no. Okay. What's through that door there? Our, our staff room. Right. <laughs> I'm lift. just wondering whether, sorry, I'm just, whether they're... No, I'm just confused as to where the actual play is when they came in before. Downstairs. But it says here, this room where the play is... Perhaps a travelling act that's performed here. In this building. In the building, not necessarily upstairs. Because this is where the town council lives. So it's the town council, they've got to perform the play too. Yes, but so whether they're going downstairs, downstairs or upstairs, upstairs yeah. that's what I'm confused about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose it would be nice to take attention to bring the kids down, or there could be a, a rogue actor that comes up. With music, drums come up and just sort of saying, come downstairs, we're going to have something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and when you say downstairs, where they met, is the room that we were... Uh, just behind where the paintings reveal on the wall, is that right? Yeah, that room. That main room there. That's quite so, dark. Yeah, it is. Mm. Dramatic analysis? Yeah. It's, uh, I guess the, the question is whether... Because this is nice. Is well, then again, that's if it's the school. Mm. Yeah. Because this... Yeah. This will well, this will spring out of the way. Yes, we will. Right. But again, again, thinking about how a performance might work in the space as it is now. Mm. So you know, rather than being a full-on theatre production, we're looking at yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a different sort of it. yeah. I think potentially one one way around it might be to cover that with a. Um, for it, you know, and do do a, a, a performance either here or there, potentially. It's not historically accurate. No, but if we're thinking of filming this... Yeah. Um, and if we can potentially get the live streaming company or that, that was right. the potential of using it in a filmic way rather than theatrical. Yes. Mm. So, so, you know, you could have audiences sitting in the mm. seat and you could be walking down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, declaiming one of the mm. various things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, you, so you could, you know, you got the camera here or whatever. So, mm. yeah, now that I've learned from you, you know, how you block it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the right thing But uh, yes, um, but in terms of, we were also talking about doing the short yeah. performance, but live, weren't we? Yeah. Um, so you might need to have a performance space, yes. uh, as well as all the the kind of interaction which might be filmed separately, so that you have you then you lead to the performance, which would need to take place in a space with an audience. But then the other bits could be. So, so you could come and film uh, pre 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 filmed bits. In, in certain spaces, so it could potentially lighter space or whatever. Mm. But the actual live and the live streamed version would be a performance. Probably need a, a setup, a space, a little stage, or not a stage, but an area in which it could take place. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because I imagine. Well, I mean, obviously, we need to speak to the management about. Yeah. Uh, about this. Um, when it would go on. When it would go on, because you've got your six hundredth thing yesterday, so I imagine that you've got lots of things. Um, I'm sure they are. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, so it's a big year for them here. Yeah. Obviously, um, if we've got a, a, a significant year in terms of Shakespeare for here as well. I mean, doing a small section of a play, but possibly done downstairs. Yeah, I think with a standing we... audience, which is what it would have been then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? But I'm thinking mm -hmm. about how you know, again, from the museum's perspective, that okay, if you're just doing it in a, a small dark space downstairs, you don't get to see all of this, mm. is how we can include all this great space within the project, even though perhaps the main performance is downstairs. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to think. I mean, historically, this is probably the most important, because yeah. it's been used for what it was used for yeah, all that yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, downstairs was the council. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got the council downstairs, we've got the schoolroom upstairs, um, and obviously, We've got great space, great light. Mm. So. I mean, there is some flexibility because these desks aren't fixed. I mean, they can be they, they, they can, move, them, yeah, they they can, can move around. Yeah, but it's whether you know. Again, this, this is why we need to talk to the management in terms of okay, what do they see the benefit of theirs um, for them of what we do? Mm. Um, of course, that would make it much more coherent for the arts council. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, the museum gets a lot of publicity and awareness raising, while at the same time creating a new form of theatrical approach to Shakespeare. Mm. This is what we want. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it, this is flexible then, so the desks can move. Yeah. So we can create a space here. We could potentially use a theatrical license. So I think at the moment we're just looking at ideas. We've got a sense of the space and then we, we'll arrange to talk to whoever makes the final decisions. Yeah. Mm. But I think if we flesh out an idea now, and I can write that up, I think it's great. send yeah. it to them and just say, having seen it and having had mm. the wonderful um, Yeah, it's great. It's really useful to, to get a, an idea of both what you tell visitors, because I think, I think you could obviously use some of that as well, couldn't you? The way the guys talk um, is so vivid and, and, and historically, you know, revealing... But if we then mix it with the idea of a troop coming and the reason why they're coming, it's got a bit of life, it's got a bit of reason for doing the Shakespeare play, putting it in a... Mm. Uh, a we actually have some context. videos shot in there yeah. with boys. Right. In there, Perfect. in costume. Yeah. Doing it. Yeah, so yeah. if we've got access to that to, to feed it in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quite often, for the groups of visitors in there... We've got three different sort of videos we can show them as well. Mm. You know, where the boys will be shown in a learning environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And yeah, one so of the boys plays Shakespeare. Yeah. So it's, you know, he's, he's here. Yeah, he's yeah. He's here. Great. Is that the balding one then? <laughs> the balding one with the yeah. that boy. Well, you could potentially have two different Shakespeare's. You could have Shakespeare, Shakespeare the boy. coming back and going, oh, I remember this. It was then flashback. Yeah, flashback, the film of, you know, someone playing Shakespeare. Historically, the conservators, when they were, we were redoing the building before we opened to the public, said that Shakespeare would recognise the building. Not mm. that bit there, because that's Victorian. Yeah. Mm. But this building this is as it was yeah. Yeah, in its so, structure. So even coming back today... He would, he would he still recognise a lot of the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 The whole thing could be either a flash forward or a flashback. <laughs> Mm. But lots of flashing, anyway. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> this is a school. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Okay. All right, so we, we've got plenty of pictures of the spaces. Great spaces, aren't there? It's it, yeah. It's fabulous. Fabulous. But, um, this is, this, for the Shakespearean point of view, seems more accurate. This feels so, so much later yes. than Shakespearean. But, but again, if, if somehow we disguise, you know, we move the things to disguise the later, the, mm. these, these brand new modern letters. He's yeah. only dated from about 1730, exactly. 1740. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Brand new. He's still in the ground, too. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even if they were turned around and covered with a, a cloth. Yeah, that's what's the, the, the sort of the alderman idea of looking, you know, watching the, yeah. the performance mm. up here, even though that's not quite accurate. It should be downstairs, but it might be. It might this, is a bit, but I mean, this is a great space. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can look at the downstairs again. Yeah. But to me, it's just this is the space to me. Yeah. yeah. It's got the right atmosphere. So anyway, what I was seeing was coming through there, interrupting the class, coming in here, doing the performance to the alderman mm -hmm. to see if it's all right as a as a structure. Yeah. As a, yeah, the conceit, as it were. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense to me. Mm. So again, like you say, it's it's yeah, getting the organisation to buy into it and the requirements of the the piece in terms of the layout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and obviously with the school as well, just to make sure. Yeah. But again, if the school the school can take part as part of an audience or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or as yeah the kids. Who are being interrupted and looking in on? Yeah, exactly. This could be covered with the theatrical backdrop, the backdrop that the that the yeah, yeah. Um, you know the troop are carrying potentially. Mm. Yeah. But in terms of your best bits, in terms of mm. the kit you need, it's That's it's ideal. Yeah, it's ideal. We wouldn't. Yeah, we're not. We're you not just building use a very small set. space, and yeah. it's you know very yeah. intimate. Three or four actors. Mm. Good. Yeah. So I guess we should just flesh out a, a, yeah. a plan, a proposal, and yeah, yeah. So if we just drop downstairs, yeah. have a look at that. Perhaps as perhaps as a theatrical route. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, if we're not allowed this bit, what might be a better bit yeah. downstairs? Yeah. Yeah. If we get more light up here because these blinds yeah. can come up. Yeah. Oh, no, that's it's useful. Yeah. 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 Mm. Purely because the headmaster doesn't like his house being looked at all. The time. <laughs> I think I think that's that's what appealed to me is that, is that if we it, it's about natural light because I yeah. think that any any filming would be would work best with natural light. So do you think how atmospheric just this is in terms mm. of mm. Um, being able to put artificial light on at the moment? Yeah, mm. but again, that seems to add to me. That's sort of adding to the. But it's mm. nice and high up. And, yeah. It's out yeah. of the, yes, it's certainly out of the way. Whereas downstairs it's quite dark, so you'd have to artificially light it, and yeah. it would seem... It'd be a bit of a clap. Yeah, yeah it, seems, so it seems silly. Yeah. Right. Well, well, thank you very much. Thanks, 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 thanks Sorry Kevin. you didn't get to do your, yeah. your, your full... <laughs> oh, I'm fine. sure we would have been writing with quills, but uh, <laughs> maybe another time. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything that you want from just filming here? Or anything? <coughs> yeah, we could pop downstairs if you wanted to you know, talk to Keith about... It's up to you. Well, um, I'll go with you. Okay. That's fine? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Keith. Okay. Right. Shake, shake. Uh, oh, you can speak Chinese. <laughs> um, Mandarin is taught in the first two years. Oh. Well, here, this it's is compulsory. Latin and Mandarin are compulsory for the first two years. Wow. Ah, now there's... So, so there's, if we had school kids in, they, they, we, could, we could have Chinese lessons. You would, yeah, you now need to talk to the school as well. Obviously. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But that's a it's in, yeah, yeah. But if they were saying right, well, this is potentially because I don't know if Face Way is a uh, what we call an influencer who live streams to China that sort of thing. So a Chinese audience would be the key audience there. Is it China or Taiwan? China. It is China because we we have to be careful, you know. <laughs> Where yeah, people are from China, and the audience. Yeah, China. We need to say Taiwan province. Right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That's part okay. of the problem. Point taken. Point taken. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Um, so we'll just pop downstairs and uh, have a. Look. I'm going to follow you there because I'm. I'm coming downstairs. There. Oh, okay. So it's a state school. It's not a private school. Sorry. It's a state it's school. A state it's state not a grammar. Grammar. State grammar school. So it's it's uh, entry exam. Level plus. Level plus. Yes. When Roger was talking about educated girls, we do educate girls, but only in the sixth form. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not fee paying anyway. No. No. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This, this one too, you don't get the pictures behind, which is good. And it, then you've got a lot of the, although that's probably a new addition. 
still the concept. It, well, it's, it's in character, but it's still in character. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's Victorian. Well, we don't need to worry. Yeah, origin, but... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. But this... Yes, yeah. that's the that's the actual external. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that's the only so, yeah. yeah. If you're filming from there, you can see this, which is yeah. yeah. So again, we were just um, talking about where the, the the play testing would go on, it, which was says downstairs where the the old men met. Was it so the, the, the council would meet here to oh, test. The council chamber. So it's, it would be in there that Well, the, there's no actual evidence of where they performed, is it? It was in this 